Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing, and today I want to introduce you to a fly I tied many years ago, which I called a grey cat. And the reason why I gave it that name is it's predominantly greyish, and uh, I caught its first fish on the Cataraugus Creek in uh, upstate western New York, I should say. Um, I got, I think I hooked up three fish that day on the grey cat. Now, there's a reason for this particular fly, and also the little brown thing that I've talked about previously. And I'll put some pictures up of some situations I've fished in the past where there's been a ton of anglers on the water and the fish are getting pounded with row, glow bugs, spoons, spinners, you name it. Everything's get thrown their way. Big garish flies. And often this is relatively close to bridges, uh, anywhere there's deep holes, for example. I think it was an 18 mile, if I remember correctly, in western New York. Uh, there's a bridge and there's a hole uh, underneath the bridge, and there must have been something 20 or 30 steelhead in there, and the bank was lined with center pin guys chucking row at them, and you would see the steelhead part as the row came towards them and then would come back together again as the row left, went behind them. And I, I saw one fish hooked up, and I'm pretty sure it was a snag. So the bottom line is here, as uh, fly anglers like to swing flies, we want to get away from this. We move upstream. We're, we're fishing in probably less productive waters because all the deep holes are getting hammered. When the fish get to us, they've seen everything. So you have to give them something drab that's not too big, not too garish. Something looks appealing to them when they have seen all the bright stuff, all the glow bugs and the row bags and everything else. So the fish that get to you, as I say, has seen everything, so you've got to give them something simple, drab, and uh, looks like it's edible. And that's the purpose of the gray cat. And it does work when you use it in that way. Uh, most of the rivers I fished in the past got a lot of uh, action. The Grand River these days is relatively slow for the number of anglers, but in the past it could be upwards of 50 anglers on a, on a Saturday in the uh, Caledonia area. So this is a type of fly I would want to put on when that happens. So let's just take a look at this uh, briefly. I've got this uh, golden pheasant rump feather here, and you'll see the proportions. The wing is not very long, it's the length of the hook. The hackle is about the length of the body. And I, I went with the uh, golden pheasant. I wanted a little bit of color, but I didn't want it to be garish. I didn't want to be, you know, a really bright scarlet hackle feather for a tail. I wanted something that was more natural in coloration, which is why I went with the uh, golden pheasant rump. If you can't find go golden pheasant rump to do this, I'd mix some brown and uh, red hackle feathers together. To, to mute down the red, give it a reddish brown look. Normally I uh, would tie this on a salmon hook. Today I'm going to use something a little different. I'm going to use a uh, Bartleet Supreme salmon in a size two. Ah, just, you know, to do something different. Uh, by the way, in terms of size, I've gone, you know, size one, uh, size two hooks, and down to a size six. You know, you could, put this in a variety of different sizes. I'm pretty sure this would work for trout in a small size. Our thread is dark brown, in this case a, a Vivas uh, Tenot. The tag is Uni Mylar uh, number 12 gold silver, and we're going to be using the gold side. The tail, as I said, is this golden pheasant rump, and we'll be trimming most of this off. The rib is Uni French oval gold in a medium. The body is Uni Mohair in beige. Uh, I use this for simplicity reasons. Um, it's quick to use. Uh, it's quicker than dubbing, but if you've only got dubbing, just use kind of a beige rabbit dubbing. It'll work fine. The hackle is brown hen, and try to get one with the gray mottling. Uh, this one, as you can see, has got some gray in it. And the wing is gray squirrel tail. So let's get started. Now, I've talked about this in a previous video, but you notice how I've modified this hook a little bit by bending it point up, so it puts it in a line with the, uh, the eye of the hook. That helps with uh, keeping fish on. So let's line on our thread here. And as I said, with other flies, this is not a floss body, so you can just 
right back without being too fussy about it. Okay, now for the tag. And we're not going to make a, a really big tag here. The proportions of this fly is going to change a little bit because I've changed the hook. But um, again, I, as I've said before, this is not supposed to be a garish fly. Okay, now for the pheasant rump tail, we're going to strip most of this off. So now the tail should look like this, and we're going to put it, it, it tie it in with the curve up. So I will pull these together. What I find the easiest thing to do in this case is just put a couple of wraps in here, and then pull the feather into position and adjust it as you need to keep the curve up. Now this was starting to splay a little bit, but that's okay. From a fish perspective, that's fine. I'll put some wraps in there, and you notice I'm leaving a fair, fairly lengthy tail. Helps to give some movement. I don't mind having long tails on flies. Now we'll tie in the rib. And now the mohair. This gets very uh, fluffy at the end and it starts to separate. So it's always handy to just trim off a bit. So you've got a relatively clean piece to tie in. Now I'm going to leave it off that bump there. I'm just going to tie it in from here. I'll bring my thread forward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this up because mohair, uh, this mohair will, you know, basically start to separate. Spinning it keeps it together uh, and uh, makes it a little easier to work with. And I'll just take it down onto the bump, cover that up, and come forward. And you see it's nice and buggy, and this is what I like about it. Now stroke some of those loose bits back to get the first wrap in here. Let's trim that off. You'll have strays, which is fine. Just stroke those strays back. Bind it all in. Okay, now for the rib. I put one turn in. What you can do is if you find the tail being kicked down, put a turn underneath the tail. It'll pop it back up again. Now we'll just wind forward. Just keep the uh, rib underneath. If you want more durability, fold it back. It adds a bit of bulk, but it keeps your rib from coming undone on the first fish. Now for the hackle. Now I've trimmed some of this feather off. I don't want to use too much of it. I want to use the long barbs. So I'm going to separate it about there. You can see how I've separated the feather. So. I'll tie the tip in. One stray there.
and I will just fold this back line done and if you get any barbs going forward just push them back Sometimes you get some twisting in the hackle, and I just keep pushing them back. You see that one that's for pointing forward, we'll just fold it back trap it. There we go. There we go. There's a hackle. Got one bit of... Uh, there's always one bit of the mohair sticking forward. There we go. Trim it off. Now for the squirrel tail. Don't use too much. Now with squirrel, it's a hard hair, it's a slippery hair. So if you tie in too much, there's a tendency for it to pull out. And um, if you're going to have to put a bushy tail on, or wing on, I should say, there are a couple of ways to do it. You can put it on in, in two parts, or you can actually put your thread in between as you wind. I'm going to stack this. You don't have to, but this one I'm going to stack. Put the length of the hook, size it, put a couple loose wraps to get everything trapped. Now work your thread back, tight wraps. Pull everything back, get, get the hackle out of the way, wind forward nice and tight. There we go. Just few extra wraps in here to cover up and we whip finish now for some head cement something you can do is put a little bit of head cement on the squirrel wing just at the base of the squirrel wing and that will help to glue it in place. Okay there's our gray cat ready to go fishing. Very effective little pattern. I've done quite well with it in the past and uh, it's caught quite a few fish for me. So give it a try, the gray cat.